I asked Steve how long he wanted me to speak. He says, until you're finished, I'm a preacher. <laughs> it takes a lot of guys to tell a preacher that. A little bit about me. Uh, I've been married to 47 years, have two sons, and I married a woman. That, that's what we used to do then. That's how I got the son. See, I pastor two churches. And in both of those churches, they're called Doers of the Word, Baptist churches. They're real churches. We are not 501c3 corporations. We're actual New Testament churches. And in both of those churches, check this, we only have two genders. And, and everybody knows which one they are. Can you believe that? Amen. Anyhow, I'm here today. Uh, I, I'm the chancellor of the King's Word School of the Bible, and I teach biblical law. And one of the things I teach is where we got the institution of human government. The vast majority of people have no idea where we got the second divine institution, and that is of human government. How many here know where we got that? Okay. All right. You ought to all should know that. You really should. Okay. It came through what we call the Noahic Covenant. And you find that in God's Word, the Bible, Genesis 9. By the way, the Bible is the most complete uh, source of knowledge and information in existence. There is nothing that comes close to the King James Bible, folks. I know. I've been studying it for years. Now, starting out with that, we start in Genesis chapter 9. And God gives us five points. Now, we're talking about legitimate government. Legitimate government. Uh, on February 9th, I, I was asked to give testimony there in Columbus at the State House uh, on a House bill. It was called the Pastors Protection Act. Now, uh, I didn't need that Pastors Protection Act, and we wouldn't need that if we didn't have so many prissy preachers in the pulpits. That, that's just a fact, okay? But I went down there because the author was a good friend of mine. Uh, Nino Vatal was a very good friend. He asked me to come and, and speak. On, and there were about 30 pastors that gave testimony. Does this keep going on and off? Okay. Can you all hear me good? Yeah, sir. Okay. About 30 pastors gave testimony. But now, mine was the only one that the AP picked up. And they put out all over the nation, one nationwide. And I didn't even know about it until I started getting phone calls. But the reason for that was... I just told the hard truth about that entity in Washington, D.C. that calls itself the Supreme Court. They are supreme in their sin. They are supreme in their rebellion against God and their treason against America. And if we go back to, how many of you believe that? Okay. We go back to Genesis chapter 9, and the five points that God gives us, number one, to whom what is it given? And you find that in Genesis 9, verse 9, 10, and verses 12, 15, and 16. To all mankind for perpetual generations and everlasting covenant, which spans all dispensations. So when God made this, he made this covenant to, to all mankind and to all animal life too. God made this covenant. The second point was the intent. The intent of real divine human government. And here it was. You find that in the first three verses. And that is, man is to govern for God. Man is to govern for God. And then the third point. Now, this is the most important point. And this is the purpose, the entire purpose of divine human government. Who knows what it is? To preserve the image of God, that being man. You find that. In verses 9, or 5, 6, and 7. God gave man dominion over the environment. He kept dominion of man for himself. And then the fourth point was the means by which man was to govern for God. God's laws, God's statutes, God's covenants, etc. And then the fifth point was simply this. All of those nations that were in compliance with the first four points, they would be at peace and not at war with God. Don't know many nations that are at peace with God today, do we? No. So that's where we got the divine institution of human government. And again, like I said, not only do hardly anybody know it, the vast majority of pastors don't know it, and they really should, shouldn't they? Yep, sir. 
Then the other thing too, how many of you, how many of you heard time and time again, Romans 13 says we must obey the government no matter what. But Romans 13 means exactly, exactly what Romans 13 says. And it gives us, first of all, he talks about all authority comes from God, all power. Amen. And God has ordained government. Legitimate government, which is real government. What we have today in America is not real government. It's illegitimate. Fraud. It's, we've got power. Power. If I was to say to this young fellow here, well, I'm more handsome than you. Well, he might argue with that. But I pulled out a 45 and said, now I'm more handsome than you. He would probably agree with me, see? <laughs> and that's what they have. They have power, but they have no standing. They have no authority. And people will say, well, aren't we supposed to obey the government? No, you're supposed to obey God. And guess what? How many branches of government do we have? Four. Okay, this fellow got it. Steve has it. We have four. The fourth branch is we the people. The executive, the judicial, and the Congress, they answer to us. But they don't know that. And we have, have allowed that. Now, we're living in such a time, God has raised every one of us up for this time, right now. And I'm often hearing people say, well, it just seems like things, there's so many of them, they're surrounding us. How can we win? Listen, here's some good news for you folks. You don't have to worry about winning. You don't have to worry about that. You see, the Lord said, He will bring the victory with Him. All you have to do is answer the call. You see? Right? How many former military people do we have here? Right. When you were given an order, you didn't say, well, you think we can win today? You just go do it, right? And that's what the Lord says, just go do it. Folks, People say, well, I've been asked time and time again, Pastor, aren't you afraid they're going to kill you? No, not really. There's been a lot of attempts. They've tried that many times. But, but see, here's something that I know. I, I absolutely have no doubts at all. There's not one of us, every single person in here, the time that, of their departure has already been predetermined by God. That's what the Bible teaches. How many of you know that? So since that's happened, there's no sense of you worrying about time, right? Yes, sir. I'll bet there's not one of you that's going to live forever. <laughs> I'll bet you're all going to die, right? Now, let me tell you something about being an activist, being a doer of the word, not just to hear. Uh, you can have a lot of fun doing that, too. You really can. See, over the years, I've been in the pro-life movement. I was on the board of Ohio Right to Life for 21 years. And since 1974, we've saved 24,000 babies from abortion. Now there's people here that know that we haven't had one slow day. Not one slow day in that time. We never get bored. I've been arrested and sued more than anybody I know. But guess what? We've won every time. Every time. And see, I teach biblical law. And if I'm the only one that's charged in the case, then I can defend myself in my venue. <laughs> Fifteen minutes of that King James Bible, they just want me out of there. <laughs> okay. And so, you know, I praise the Lord every opportunity I get to do that. Now, the reason in Columbus, when the, they, the AP took my testimony, as I told them exactly what I've told you, that that, that court in, in Washington, D.C., they're illegitimate. The word for that in the Bible is a bastard court. And again, they have committed treason against God first and the country. This is our time to stand up and fight. And over the years, we've had some, some interesting battles and fights. They're in the Cleveland area. Uh, you might not believe this, but there was some corruption in our police department. 
And one day in particular, when we called the police because I had a, a wicked young woman with a guilty conscience come up from behind me, and she tapped me on the shoulder. When I turned around, she sprayed me with mace in my eyes. So that was an assault. I called the police. Police come down. They went into the abortion mill. And what happens when they go into the abortionist's office, they tell them, uh, the doc, they call the abortionist doctors. Can you believe that? They said, uh, he'll be in, just go into his office. So when the two police officers went in there, guess what was laying on his desk? It was an envelope with cash sticking out of it. So these guys picked it up, they walked out the door, they didn't even have the decency to hide the cash. It was still in the envelope. And I said, are you going to arrest that woman? And they said, well, Pastor, when people don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. I said, okay, I understand. I said, you, you guys don't make enough money being police officers? They said, no, and they, they thought that was funny. Well, you know, if they weren't making enough money, I thought, I should have to help them. I mean, I should help them, right? So what I did, I read seven, almost seven million, over six million people, six days a week on the radio. Been on the radio 44 years. So I thought what I'll do is I'll help these guys make some more money. So I had their names and their badge numbers in their precinct, fourth district. I went on the radio and I gave their names out. I was officer so-and-so and officer so-and-so. They can't make enough money being police, so they're taking bribes down at the bloody abortion mill. Now, if any of you folks out there have something where you could use security, maybe you have dog fights or cock fights or maybe child porn movies, somewhere where you have security that has no courage, no guts, will do anything for a dollar, call over to 4th District, and I gave the phone number. And I gave their names and badge numbers. Well... <laughs> Normally when I go out there to the abortion mill, there's always one police car watching us. This time there were two of them watching us. And as I'm out there preaching, one of them pulls up very slowly and I thought, uh-oh, gonna be a fun day. And the cop pulled up and they said, hey pastor. I said, yeah. They said, you see that car over there? I said, yeah. He said, they're watching you. I said, well, they, they do that all the time. He said, no, but it's different this time. He said, we're here watching them. Do you want to know why? I said, yeah, why? He said, because they have a contract on you. There's a contract on whoever shoots you in the back or in the face or wherever. That's what those guys have done. And we want you to know this. We thank you for what you did because... We want you to know that those of us on the police department here that are clean, that aren't dirty, we appreciate all that you've done. So I went out in the air and I, I gave those guys some heads up and accolades to praise the good Lord for clean, honest, decent police officers. Amen? Amen. Well, that, that lasted a little while. And, uh, you know, we have a, a policy, and that policy is no compromise, period. None at all. We don't compromise. Well, then we had another situation. Folks, when I'm telling you, you can have some fun if you just put the Lord's work first. In our prison ministry, when the national rate was set of return, inmates returning back to prison, the recidivity rate was 72%. In our prison ministry, ministry it was zero. Zero. People were asking us, how in the world do you do that? Amen. Well, <laughs> the guys that are with us understand that. <clears throat> we have a saying, if you keep yourself busy enough doing the Lord's work, you won't have time for the devils. And that's the way it works. Sir. All the guys that came and the ones that after one or two days say, no, nah, I can make it on my own, they all went back. The guys that stayed with us, none of them went back. And that's over a 40-year period. And so, one day... I went out to the abortion mill, and, and you had to see this one. I had this, uh, I had this big sign, and on one side it had a picture of a, a little baby, a nice little baby, and on the other side it had a half of a bucket cut, and it was a, a baby, like a doll hanging out of it with blood. One side said life, this side said death. Well, I had parked my car there in the parking lot, and the abortion mill was in a building 
with all kinds of offices. They had restaurants and things in there. And I would always make it a practice to go in and buy a cup of coffee. Because the law states that if you patronize a place, you can park there uh, for that day. And so they called the police on me. Police came down, young officer, said, you have to move your, your car. I said, well, I don't want to. He said, well, you have to. They want you to move your car. And I said, well, see, if you make me move my car, I'm going to have to sue you unless you make everybody else in that parking lot move their car, because that's actually the law. He didn't know that. He said, let me call the sergeant. So he called the sergeant. The sergeant came down and told him the same thing. He said, let me call my sergeant. He called his sergeant. He came down, same thing. Let me call the captain. The captain came down. Now, folks, I wish you'd have seen this. This was beautiful. Oh, God, because I'm not smart enough to work something like this out, okay? But I got this great big sign, and I got this literature showing what an abortion really is. And so they come down there, and I'm talking to the captain, and I said, uh, I had to sign. I said, would you hold this? So the sergeant's holding my sign. The sergeant's standing there holding my sign while I'm giving the captain the literature. Guess who drives in? Their ACLU lawyer. <laughs> the ACLU lawyer comes in, and I can't tell you all he said, but he used a lot of Fs, okay? And the captain said, one more word out of you, one, you're going to jail. So just give me one more word. And that, that lawyer, he hightailed it out of there. And then he told the young officer, the first one there, he said, you go up there and tell those people the Pastor Sanders can park here as long as he wants, and if there's a problem, come see me. And then, he, and then he said, go ahead. And I parked there. Uh, another interesting thing right there that day. See, I'm a fundamentalist Baptist preacher. I mean, I'm just about, we're just about as fundamentalist dry. We, didn't, we thought that all of these things like um, miracles happening today and demon possession, all that stuff, that just happened to Pentecostals. Okay? But God showed me a lot of things. I'm going to tell you. Right there, right there, at that same place, that abortion mill, we had an operation rescue. We headed up the first operation rescues in Cleveland. My job was to decoy. My job was to, to bring the Satanists, because there's a whole lot of Satanists that come out, and I mean, they don't hide the fact that they're Satanists, to get them away from where the, the real operation rescue was taking place, across town at the other abortion mill. So, all week long on the radio, I just said this. Saturday morning, 7 a.m., light against the darkness, good against evil. Number five, seven circle, be there. I told you, never said we were going to rescue anything. Just said that, right? So, I get out there, I have five people with me, and the police, this is a, this is a great big shopping mall. The police have got the whole circle cordoned off. So I go in there, and the police are out there, and there's 80-something Satanists lined up across the street. Now, I have three islands, they call them islands, in between the two driveways where I, I, I'm, I, I have to stay there. They've got me an injunction against me, and that's, that's the only place I could go, stay on those islands, my people and I. And uh, they said, anybody... Uh, that would be with me, and I think the term they used, what was that term, but anyhow. So I'm out there, I go out there, and the police are there, and the, and the guy in charge comes over and says, look, are you going to, uh, you guys going to rescue here today? I said, look. I says, how would you like to avoid a whole lot of paperwork? I mean, a lot of paperwork. He said, I'd like that a whole lot. I said, I'll tell you what, we're going to do some theatrics. You do the theatrics with me. And we'll avoid a whole lot of paperwork. He said, count me in, I'm in. Okay. So I said, you just go along with me. And so just then, who comes over? This guy named John. And he was a big fellow. I mean, a great big fellow. And John has got blasphemy. He's got blasphemy written on him. He's got things written about the Lord Jesus on him. Okay. Now he comes over and he comes up on my island. And he's, he's not allowed on that island, see? Only people that were in conjunction with me were allowed up in that island. And so, now, in concert, that was the word they used, in concert, in the injunction. 
I didn't know if that meant people had danced with me or what. Okay. <laughs> so John comes up there. John's not supposed to be there. You see, because I got to know now that, say, I'm here and I got the cops at my back. They can see my back. And this is my place. And he's not supposed to be there. And so he's standing there. And I, I walked up and I poked him. And I'm poking him and I says, you know what, boy? I said, there's nothing wrong with you, boy, but you don't have any guts, boy. And he's getting angry. And he's getting red. And, uh, and he said, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of your blank and blank Jesus. And I poked him. I said, yeah, you are. Let me tell you why, John. I can prove Jesus right now, right here. You can't prove me your king, John. You see, right now I can prove Jesus to you. If you had the guts, John, if you had the guts, if you only had the guts, and I'm poking him. Okay. And he said, what do I do? I said, you take my hand right now and repeat after me and I'll, I'll prove the Lord Jesus to you. See, God doesn't lie to you. He always answers your commitment. So he, he laughed. He said, all right. He took my hand. He said, go ahead. We said the sinner's prayer. Folks, I'm going to tell you, I was shocked. You ought to have seen it. The guy didn't even look the same. Tears started coming out of his eyes. He said that sinner's prayer and he said, Pastor, he said, he spoke to me. He did speak to me, just like you said. He is for real. And he cried. This is not a, I turned around and the police were standing like this. <laughs> and I looked over at all the Satanists, and I knew right then that John could never go back. He's, he's a dead man. He goes back there. Okay? They were looking at him. They just saw their man. But he gave his heart to the Lord right there. <clears throat> and see, God will will do this for you if you have the courage to come and stand and it's now or never for us we've got to take our country back folks we've got to stop this I was one of the pioneers in Ohio of homeschooling a woman named Martha Lippitt was a public school teacher back in the early 70s she had a Bible on her desk and the Ten Commandments on the wall and the ACLU came in and got her fired. And uh, so she called me. So we started a campaign on homeschooling. And it grew, and it grew. At that time, you couldn't get any homeschooling curriculum. Hardly was anything. Now that has changed. And homeschooling is growing by leaps and bounds. We gotta take our, get our children out of the public school system. You gotta get them out of there. They're great gates of hell. Martin Luther said, Unless God's word, the Bible, reign paramount within the public education system, they would be nothing less than great gates of hell. If you love your children, get them out of the public school system. Get them out of there. You know, in these battles over the years, like I said, we've never had a boring day. One of the, one of the most memorable days I had was the days of the trees. Now, uh, folks, you've had, to, you've had to see this. I'm out there in front of planned predators, the most wicked, the most evil, the most unclean, corrupt, creeping, crawling death on planet Earth. And uh, if you want to know how I really feel, but anyhow. So I'm out there with Dan, and I'm preaching out in the front, and we have these signs, these great big signs, you know, to show pictures of aborted babies. And in the front, they have these four trees, and they're not big trees, very kind of small trees. And we had our, our signs leaning up against these trees. Well, here comes this police officer. He's got one of those Dodge, you know, those fast looking Dodge cars. He pulls up, and this guy's a great big guy. He's got, he's wearing sunglasses, and he pulls up, and he said, uh, I understand that uh, the trees have been complaining about your signs. I thought he was being a smart aleck, you see. So I said, no, you see, officer, you see, I asked those trees, I said, trees, do these signs bother you? And you know what those trees said to me? No, pastor. So I, I was being sarcastic because I thought this fellow was, was being smart aleck. So he gets out of the car and I thought, oh boy. Dan, who was with me, said, hey, Pastor, okay? He said, uh, well, well, let me tell you first what he did. He said, well, just see about that. Now, you got to see this, folks. Right out there in 
front of Planned Parenthood, you've got these lesbians, they call themselves descorts. Well, they call themselves escorts. We call them descorts, that's what they are. And these lesbians are out there, and they're all involved in witchcraft. So he gets out, he says, we'll see about that. So he goes over to the tree, and he says, tree, is that sign bothering you? So, you know, Dad says, Pastor, he's crazier than us, he's got a gun. <laughs> so I, I kind of walked up and I said, no, officer, the sign doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> He turns around, folks, I'm not kidding you, this is true. He turns around, comes back, he said, well, the tree confirmed what you said, but I, I, want, to, uh, I want to call another couple of cars. I want them to hear this. <laughs> sure enough, here comes two young officers in two different cars. And the folks pitching this, they got the cars parked across the driveways of Planned Parenthood. With the red lights going, okay? The people that are coming in, instead of turning in, they're driving past. <laughs> so these other two cops get out and they come over and he's and this guy is just as serious as he says uh, he had a complaint that uh, the signs were bothering the trees uh, Pastor Sanders told me that uh, they were I confronted the tree the tree said it wouldn't be a bother I want you you guys to hear it for yourself so they go over there and, I, and we're standing like this and I don't know what I can do now because the one cop's looking right at me while the big guy is talking to the tree. <laughs> and he says, Tree, is this sign bothering you? And I can't say anything now. But from behind me comes this voice, No, officer, not at all. It was from the other cop. Okay. <laughs> so, so I look over there on the sidewalk and there's the lesbians over there. And they're looking at us with these confused looks. So the, the big cop, he tells the two younger cops, you go on over there telling them that uh, we talked to the trees, the trees confirmed it. The sun went by. So they went over there and they turned. And the lesbians just sat there. They didn't know what to say. They couldn't say anything. Okay. See, God's got a sense of humor, folks. He, and, and not only that, but in that same place, he, this fellow over here can tell you he was with me when... Uh, I was the only one in the whole state of Ohio that was forbidden to drive down this road in front of Planned Parenthood. I write songs and make songs. And one of the songs that I wrote is uh, Burning Lake of Fire. Okay. Don't fall into that burning lake of fire. You go down, down, down. The flames, they'll burn higher. You burn, burn, burn that lake of fire. Well, I put, the, put that on my car, turn it up real loud and pull up in front of the lesbians, and that's what I sang to them. Don't fall in, you know. And uh, they called the police, and they said I terrified them. I terrified them. So the cops come out, and they come up, and they said, uh, you, you terrified them. I said, I just sang to them, that's all. I serenaded them, okay. And they said, well, the prosecutor said that they're terrified, so they wrote me a ticket for terrifying them. We're singing to them. And then when they wrote me the ticket, these two cops asked me, Pastor, is it possible we could get one of your CDs? We love your songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's no okay. see, God, if you if you're out there, if you're willing to serve him, he'll make sure you're not bored. <laughs> these th those things happen out there. But anyhow. We went, and I got, I got prosecuted by the prosecutor, and I got fined by the judge, and and you know what the Bible says? Touch not God's anointed. Both of those two today are in prison. Yeah, they're both in prison today. Yeah, so uh, because they were running uh, money laundering, drugs, and the prosecutor and the judge and a whorehouse out of the apartment buildings there, and so they're making a lot of money finding people like me. <laughs> but many other things have happened down along the way and over the years, uh, folks. And I can tell you this, that uh, don't, don't get discouraged. Uh, you don't have to worry about winning this. The Lord says He will bring the victory with Him. 
God will always honor your com the commitments we make to Him. Always do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. I wanted to uh, just tell you one more thing here. That young fellow from the NRA, is he still here? Okay, I got something you need to read here. Uh, the subject, Hillary in Beaumont, Texas. How many of you know that Hillary made a stop in, in Beaumont, Texas here a couple weeks ago? Okay. How many do you know that only six people came out to see Hillary? Okay. But now, wait a minute. Here's the reason why. Uh, Hillary was there to meet with the pact with Muslims at West Beaumont, she went. She was there to go to a fundraiser. And those six people that showed up to greet her, she wouldn't even talk to them. And she had a fundraiser there where 200 Muslims showed up, and she ended up walking out the door with $500,000, pandering to the Muslims, uh, making it one of the top five private fundraisers Clinton has had uh, in the country. So you won't see that on the national news. I just thought you need to know that. That's something you need to get out there on the radio and I guess with that I just want to thank you for inviting me down here it's been good uh, we have a saying up there in our ministry I'm the, I'm the president of our tea party and I just praise the good Lord for Steve because Steve understands that if God is not in it you can't win it and, and, I, and, and our tea party as president of the tea party I had to deal with it with some problems in there, I had a group of women who had made up their mind that we were giving God too great a place in the tea party. Now, folks, you can't give God too great a place. Amen? Amen. And uh, they, they said that a 30-second prayer would be sufficient. Well, they shouldn't have told me that because they got about a 10-minute sermon on why they should repent of that. Okay? But I, I told you, I'm telling you this because you have to watch. They will try to sneak in. There's some women that came in trying to divide uh, out there. In our Lake County Tea Party, the same thing happened out there. And the Tea Party broke off and they formed a Liberty Coalition. And as long as I'm the president of that Tea Party, God comes first. And there is no way that you can ever give God too great a place in your life. And again, folks, obedience to God from Genesis to Revelation, God's word in the Bible demands, one, obedience to Him, two, resistance to tyranny is always obedience to God. Amen. Resistance Amen. to tyranny is always so. We must resist tyranny. We must run to this battle, uh, folks, uh, because we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.